revivals I grew up in. I think about revival that I started preaching across the nine states of this nation. And I started thinking about what God was doing and the pattern and the shape that he was taking. Haggai chapter 2 verse number 3. Y'all lift your hands and pray for me real quick, will you? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your healing power. God, we thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you're able to heal still today. Your blood is still there. Your blood had not lost its power. I pray for healing in my body right now, Lord, that you would move. Lord, that you would dry up every symptom. Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would heal my body. Lord, that I would deliver this word in Jesus' name. Look at your neighbor and say amen and amen. amen. Haggai hey, yeah, chapter 2, verse number 3. If you got your Bibles, turn with me there, please. Now, I said this is going to be my main focus of Scripture, and it will be. I'll have more Scripture later. This is going to be my main focus of Scripture as I begin to start out. Haggai hey, yeah, chapter 2, verse number 3. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? <laughs> you know, let me stop there for just a minute. You know, sometimes, you know, we, you know, Haggai hey, asked him a question. He says, hang on just a minute. Because they was getting dead, they was getting kind of <coughs> taken away, they're sitting back, they they they'd been seeds, you know, the temple's been torn down, people have been in a mess. <coughs> Basically just church problems. Look at your neighbor and say church problems. Church problems. They seen the church up and down and this and that. So Haggai hey, steps up, he said, Who among you is here that has ever seen this house in their first glory? Now, in this body of believers here, well, I know that revival is, is it's imperative for this nation. But why well, I know that revival, that God is doing something to stir this region, this area, the southeast part of Kansas. How many of you have, have experienced true revival growing up? Raise your hands. I mean, you've seen bodies healed. You've seen souls saved. Raise your hand. You've experienced true revival. You know, when we look back and we begin to think, because when I think about revival, a lot of times, Brother Rod, I go back to that part and I think about how I was raised. But i got to remember that what God is going to do in this season, He's going to blow our minds. He's not going to take us back and give us something that we've already had. Y'all going to sit on me this morning? He's not going to take us back and give us something that we've already had or something that's already been there. There's a new wine revival. Let me tell you something. There is a new wine revival. There is a generation of believers. There are people who are ready. There are people who are ready to take it to the next level, to the next stage. I do not want somebody else's theological revival event. I do not want what another church has had. I want something new. I want something brand new. I want to dig a new well. I don't want to dig in a well that's already been there. Can somebody say it, man? I want to dig a new well. Revival has got to move. He said, is anybody left among you that has sold this house? See, they talk like I do, saw. <laughs> Who must be from Oklahoma? <laughs> Who is left among you that saw this house? In her first glory. And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Just close your Bibles for a minute. I'm going to read the rest of them. I'm going to preach on this for a minute. 
He wants to know how many is left among that have saw the power of God and saw the house and saw what God is going to do. Then he says, now that you that are seeing it here, you see it now, don't it now, 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 does it look like what you saw before or does it look as if it is absolutely nothing? And can I say now that, that what God wants to do is he wants to push a revival through this nation that makes believers come back to an altar. Because here's what revival will do. Revival will save souls. Revival will heal the sick. Amen. Revival will strengthen the church. Amen. But the number one course of revival is that souls would get saved. Amen. Listen to me. The number one course of revival is souls that the souls would get saved. The Bible says that the signs and the wonders would follow after us. So after we get into this mode of revival, then the healings, and then and then then, then, then the raising the dead, and then the lame walk, and uh, just just all those things begin to follow after a revival. But a revival would do one thing, and that is that is to save souls. I was talking to my mom the other day. She had come up, and we was talking. We was laughing about an incident that happened several years ago in the Galena Church. We had a, uh, we had a big a youth revival. And uh, Sister Linda Curley, she said Margaret was there, and, and they was all getting, and, and, and they was going to go back and get food ready. And she said that Linda Curley and Sister Margaret had come to Mama and said, we don't have enough food to feed all these people. Somebody needs to tell Roger that we don't have enough food. They said, since you're his mama, you go tell him. <laughs> she said, okay. She said, I was preaching. She said, she got up here and she said, I was praying for everybody. She, 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 she said, she's trying to inch closer to me. And it's closer to me. She's standing there. Well, I didn't know. I thought she was standing in my line. I just wrenched and grabbed my hands and laid on top of her head. She went to shouting all over the front of that building and all over her place. And then finally somebody said, where's Jill at? They come out and look. She was shouting all over the building. <laughs> And guess what? Like the few loaves and few fishes, we had enough. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Revival broke out. <laughs> and I was laughing about that, and I, went, and I got to think about that, thinking about that, and I thought, you know, what an amazing thing that would happen that if, that if we stop breathing in this word revival, that those that get close enough to, to us, uh, that, that they don't have to necessarily connect with us, uh, but they get close enough to us, they will get the same idea. They were getting the same feeling. Because, we, because revival is not just a few meetings and see how many superstars we can get in one building. Revival is about believers who come together and get hungry for a move of God. So when I think about revival, I think about everything that's happened up in my past and, 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 and just, just everything that's going through. And God says, hang on just a minute. He said, he said, don't think about all those things that now this is what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to do something completely different. Don't go back and dig a well, but redig and dig a new well and a new place for a new wine, for a new water, for a new experience. Come on, somebody. For a new revival that's going to touch this nation, that's going to shape this church, that's going to bring us to a complete place of worship with God.